Hello everyone. So today I am again back with uh, one of the uh, common cases that we see in our day to day life in the OPD. Uh, this is nothing but one of the most common connective tissue disorders which is also called as Marfan syndrome. Now we all know that Marfan syndrome is uh, one of the connective tissue disorders that is caused due to abnormalities of fibrillin protein which is also called as FBN1. Uh, so I just wanted to demonstrate some of the common findings that we see in uh, patients of uh, Marfan syndrome so that when the next time such patient comes to you in the OPD right from the mere uh, vision or sight of this patient from a distance you can just conclude that one of the Marfan's patient is coming to me to get uh, uh, checked up or get screened. Uh, why this is important because Marfan syndrome can at times be very severe because it can be associated with some cardiovascular diseases like aortic regurgitation. Cystor, uh, cystic medial necrosis, it can be associated with aortic aneurysms, mitral valve prolapse. However, it can also involve the eyes, it can involve the lungs, it can involve the skin and various other tissues of the body. <coughs> this patient had some CNS involvement uh, with Marfan syndrome but we will not go into the details. Her cardiovascular uh, findings were normal. However, this lecture has been conducted just to show some of the common clinical features it is not possible always that you get all the book pictures of clinical findings of every disease in every patient but for marfan syndrome we use something which is called as the ghent criteria g h e n t ghent criteria which was later on revised uh, called as the revised ghent criteria with some of the z scores of aortic uh, valve z scores of other tissues of the heart etc which we will not go into the detail but directly I will show some of the uh, clinical findings in this patient that will help you arrive at a diagnosis of Marfan syndrome. <clears throat> so this is the lady who hails from Madhya Pradesh and she has been associated uh, uh, in checking up with me and uh, following up to me since years. Uh, she was also positive for neuromyelitis optica, but as I said, we will not go into the detail. Let us directly switch on to all the clinical findings that <coughs> gives a suspicion of Marfan syndrome in this patient. If you can see very closely, get the x-ray, x-ray layout. If uh, we see in this patient, mere at the look, you can see that her face is okay, but the zygomatic, the maxillary prominence is flat which is one of the features of Marfan syndrome. You get a flat zygomatic uh, prominence, flat maxillary prominence. If I tell her to open her mouth, you can note that there is crowding of teeth and there is a high arched palate. <clears throat> Zara Mukholo, if you can bring the camera closer, you can see that her palate is high arched and there is crowding, crowding of the teeth. However, if we pay attention to her skeletal system like the chest, I cannot expose more but See, there is a prominence of the bone, the sternum, with prominence of the sternoclavicular joint, which is peculiar of pectus cavernatum, which can be seen in cases of Marfan syndrome. This, these are the non-specific findings which you can see in a number of patients. But if I make this patient to stand straight, now look how much tall she is, which should give you, which should give you a hint that this patient is a case of Marfan syndrome. She is having a tall height with a, with a very slim body. If I ask her to uh, stretch the arms, look at her arm span. Her arm span is too much. To be precise, I have these records. Her arm span is 193 centimeter, which is from the tip of the middle finger of the right hand to the tip of the middle finger of the left hand. This is her arm span, which is 193 centimeter. And I took her height, which is 181 centimeters. And the ratio of the upper segment, that is from the head to the pubic symphysis, upper segment to the pubic symphysis to the floor, is upper segment to lower segment ratio, which is around 0.82. It falls in the positive criteria because the grand criteria says the if the upper segment lower segment ratio is less than 0.86 it is Marfan it is one of the positive criteria for Marfan syndrome her upper segment lower segment is less than 0.86 because it is 0.82 however if we if we take a ratio of the arm span which was 193 centimeter to the height which is 181 centimeter the ratio is 1.06 which is again a positive criteria according to grand criteria which says that the ratio of the arm span to the height should be more than 1.05 her ratio is 1.06 so it is again positive <coughs> excuse me now if we jump 
to some of the uh, maneuvers that we see uh, uh, in Marfan syndrome, particularly the Walker sign, the St St Steinberg sign, etc., they are also positive. The Marfan's wrist sign is also called as the Walker sign, and the Marfan's thumb sign is also called as the Steinberg sign. So let us see what are these. आप अपने हाथ को जिस इस तरह से हाँ इसको पकड़िए सो इफ वी सी इफ यू कैन ब्रिंग द कैमरा क्लोजर सी ऑल आर फिंगर्स आर ओवरलैपिंग वन शी इज ट्राइंग टू होल्ड द रिस्ट विद द अदर हैंड सो दीज ऑल डिजिटल फैलेंजेस आर ओवरलैपिंग विद इच अदर विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ पॉजिटिव वॉकर साइन और द मार्फान रिस्ट साइन सिमिलरली इफ आई आस्क हर टू मेक टू टू ड्रॉ द थम इन साइड एंड क्लेंच द फिंगर्स her <coughs> distal phalanx is again out of the ulnar border of the hand which is again a positive steinberg sign which is normally not possible in normal subject see see my fist and her fist her distal phalanx of the thumb is clearly coming out of the ulnar border whereas mine is just it can be seen at the ulnar border this is again a positive sign in marfan syndrome because their connective tissue is hyper flexible Uh, if i tell her to demonstrate the umbilicus sign by uh, wrapping the hand behind and trying to approach the umbilicus she will, she will be able to come very close to the umbilicus see i can merely come to the flank but she will come to the front of the abdomen see it is nearly touching her umbilicus so this is again one of the criteria or one of the common findings of marfan syndrome on the other hand if i just try to show you her legs it, they are again slender thin and uh, very uh, uh, fragile to look sirf ghutne tak thoda pant ko upar karo see watch her shin it is tall lengthy thin and very slender you can see her fingers and hand see very thin spider like fingers <coughs> Excuse me. See my hands and see hers. There is some association or involvement of the interphalangeal joints too, which is very common in Marfan syndrome. So this is how Marfan syndrome patient looks like. Next time such patient comes to you, you should not be uh, missing such clinical findings because these are very common. One more thing. Uh, in the criteria is the scoliosis of patients of marfan syndrome so this is her thoracic and lumbar spine you can easily see this scoliosis of the spine to the left she also has a scoliosis of the dorsal lumbar spine which is again one of the uh, criteria in marfan syndrome so on and all uh, she also had some stria on the shoulder and abdomen which i may not be able to show you but they are again included in the, in the clinical findings of marfan syndrome so this is a clear cut case of marfan syndrome who is having neuromyelitis optica and she is regularly following up to me from madhya pradesh and uh, uh, it is so kind of her that she has given us permission to show the clinical features to the young doctors who will uh, definitely uh, will be treating patients in the future and it is because of such patients that we get to learn so much and try to deliver more precise treatment to the future patients so i thank everyone and thank the patient in particular for cooperating so much and i hope this lecture would be uh, useful to every doctor who sees this and we will be able to detect more of these connective tissue disorders in the coming future thank you so much